Good day everyone. Welcome to the first lecture on introduction to drones. In this lecture, we will be first understanding the definition of a drone or what a drone exactly is. This is important since the remainder of the course discusses about the basic principles of a drone and making a drone. So let us start with understanding what is a drone. By definition, a drone is an unmanned aircraft or ship that can navigate autonomously without human control or beyond line of sight. Essentially, a drone is a flying robot that can be remotely controlled or fly autonomously to software controlled flight plans in their embedded systems, working in conjunction with onboard sensors and GPS. In the recent past, UAVs were most often associated with the military, where they were used initially for anti-aircraft target practice, intelligence gathering, and then more contri controversially as weapons platforms. Drones are now also used in a wide range of civilian roles, ranging from search and rescue, surveillance, traffic monitoring, weather monitoring, and firefighting, to personal drones, and business drone-based photography, as well as videography, agriculture, and even delivery services. Different drones are capable of traveling varying heights and distances. Very close-range drones usually have the ability to travel up to three miles and are mostly used by hobbyists. Close-range drones have a range of around 30 miles. Short-range drones travel up to 90 miles and are used primarily for espionage and intelligence gathering. Mid-range drones have a 400-mile distance range and could be used for intelligence gathering, scientific studies, and meteorological research. The longest-range drones are called endurance UAVs and have the ability to go beyond the 400-mile range and up to 3,000 feet in the air. Because drones can be remotely controlled, and can be flown at varying distances and heights, they make perfect candidates to take on some of the toughest jobs in the world. They can be found assisting in a search for survivors after hurricane, giving law enforcement and military an eye in the sky during terrorist situations, and advancing scientific research in some of the most extreme climates on the planet. Drones have even made their way into our homes and serve as entertainment for hobbyists and a vital tool for photographers. A drone is always accompanied with a ground control station or GCS. The current slide shows a fixed wing drone and a multi rotor drone along with the GCS. The GCS provides the control of the drone, is a communication link between the pilot and the drone and collects all the video telemetry data sent by the drone. The GCS also controls the camera or any payloads that are installed on the drone for particular missions. The hardware of the GCS allows various applications such as controlling the drone, controlling the payloads, whereas the software allows applications such as geofencing of the area of the drone. Let's look at the overall detail of the drone. In the present slide, we will be discussing about the details of a drone in general. These details will be covered further in depth during the later part of the course. The drone is a vehicle which consists of sensors such as accelerometer, gyroscope, compass, GPS, which tell the system state or the position of the drone in the environment. This gives information regarding the stability of the drone and the relative as well as the exact location of the drone. This is required for the pilot to know the direction of motion of the drone as well as check whether the drone is responding to the controls. The drone consists of the main flight controller, which can be said to be the brain of the drone. The flight controller controls the various aspects of the sensors as well as 
controls any actuation mechanism or any algorithm in terms of safety of the drone. The details of the flight controller will be covered later during the course. The GPS attached on the drone connects to various satellites and helps in determining the precise position of the drone. This is important, especially from the point of outdoor navigation and stability of the drone. Many of the autonomous navigation system rely on GPS coordinates for their positioning and navigation in the environment. The slide also shows the link between the drone and the ground control system as discussed earlier. The pilot controls the drone through the ground control system as discussed in the previous sli slide. Thus, the overall working of the drone is as discussed. As we move further into the course, we will understand the drone more in detail. While interviewing various candidates, one of the main things that I realized is the confusion regarding the difference between the traditional model airplanes and drones. The current slide talks about the distinct differences in between a model airplane and a drone. One of the differences is the build. A model controlled airplane consists of a simple motor driven propeller mounted on a body, whereas a drone is a sophisticated built device built keeping a mission in mind with design specifications. Another key difference is that a remote control plane needs someone to control it, as the name alludes to. Many drones, on the other hand, can actually fly autonomously without the need for external control. Remote control planes are more likely to be flown for fun, whereas drones are the most specialist equipment that go beyond just flying for recreational purposes. These are some of the differences between a model airplane and a drone. Students are further encouraged to compare the same, which will help get a better understanding of what, what, of what a drone actually is. While talking, about, while talking about drones or while learning more about drones in the aerospace industry, three terms will be frequently used. They are unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV, unmanned aerial systems or UAS, and autonomous drones. Students are requested to keep these three terms in mind very carefully and understand the difference between them. A UAV refers specifically to aircraft that can be remotely piloted without requiring a human on board to fly. While this term can be used accurately to describe drones in commercial or civilian use cases, it is most commonly used in reference to military applications. An unmanned aircraft system or UAS refers to the entire system required for advanced drone operations including the aircraft, ground control station, and communication system. UAS can either require a human pilot on the ground or be fully autonomous without the need for a human operator. Any UAS includes a UAV as the aircraft component of the system. The term autonomous drone describes a UAV that can operate without any human intervention. In other words, it can take off, carry out missions, and land completely autonomous. An autonomous drone is a type of UAV, but a UAV is not necessarily an autonomous drone. In the case of autonomous drones, communication management software coordinates missions and pilots the aircraft instead of a human. Because an autonomous drone is piloted by software instead of a human, an autonomous drone is a part of a UAS by definition, as it requires a complete system to operate. Drones come in all sizes. They can be as small as a coin, called as nano-sized drones, to as huge as drones capable to carry people, or heavy lift drones, or even more famously known as flying cars. Usually, the small, smaller we make the size of the drones, the more agile the drones become. 
due to its size and flexibility to move quickly. That's why in many military applications, usually smaller drones are preferred since they can quickly carry out their missions and return to base station. The larger heavy lift drones are usually used for applications such as delivery of goods or lifting heavy equipment for carrying surveys or emergency response purpose. We will be talking more about the various applications of the drones in the upcoming lectures. To summarize the overall lecture, he understood the definition of a drone, what a drone is, and what is the requirements of a drone ground station. The overall working of a drone, along with a brief overview of its various components, the difference between a model aeroplane and a drone, understanding the difference between UAV, UAS, and autonomous drones, and finally, understanding the size of the drones. In the next lecture, we will be looking at various types and subtypes of the drone. Thank you very much.